My name is Sebastian Zvandanaka and I work um, at the University of Cambridge on um, plant diseases and plant pathology. There's many different ways you can categorise the kind of research that we do. Um, uh, the one I've kind of settled on over the years is um, genetics. So I work on genes. So I'm interested in um, what are the genes that are um, required um, for the communication between kingdoms of life, so between the plant kingdom and, for example, the animal kingdom that, pathogen, uh, that, that are pathogens on the, on, the, on the plants. So, you know, um, a, lot of, a lot of the kind of research that we do is thinking about genes and um, genetics and that kind, of, um, that kind of thing. So I work on plant parasitic nematodes. These are, um, we, we like to call them an orphan disease. Um, uh, and so an orphan disease means something that is objectively important but um, often overlooked. Um, and uh, this is a, one of the reasons why it's an orphan disease is because they parasitize roots. So they are literally overlooked because they're below ground. And so therefore they're kind of figuratively overlooked. Um, the way these nematodes um, uh, uh, work, although there's many different kinds of nematodes that infect many different plants, um, it, effectively they, um, they live in the soil, they locate the roots of a plant growing nearby. They'll, um, once they find the root, they um, use this you know, needle-like stylet on the head end to pierce a hole in the root, move inside the root tissue, um, and then move toward the center of the root, the vascular cylinder. Once they get the vas vascular cylinder, um, here they um, display this um, really amazing ability to manipulate plant development, immunity, physiology, and they cause the plant to make a new pseudo-organ. Um, this new pseudo-organ swells up inside the plant it drains um, uh, the plant photosynthate, and that's how it contributes to the crop losses due to this disease, uh, and it feeds a nematode. And so the nematode will slowly withdraw nutrition from this pseudo-organ, um, sort of over the course of several weeks, um, and swelling up and, and, and then uh, uh, completes its life cycle. And so what we're interested in is, you know, what are the genes in the plant that control this formation of this um, um, pseudo-organ, and what are the genes in the nematode that allow it to interact with those developmental processes in the plant. And the whole kind of idea um, behind the work that we do is to try to understand enough about the bio biology of the system such that we could then block it um, in agriculture. So the reason why they, these kind of these plant parasitic nematodes are um, overlooked in um, research and in agriculture uh, is because they're below ground pathogens. And for that same reason, they're very difficult to work with. So because they infect the roots, um, roots are typically grown in soil. And so you can imagine if there's something you want to observe, if you want to observe this pathology, um, then it can be a challenge if you're trying to work with a, a soil substrate. And so um, one of the major bottlenecks in uh, our research in our lab, but also just the field in general, is um, basically observing the pathology on roots. And so, you know, um, we've been thinking about this for a long time, so we decided to try and sort of um, address this constraint and try to accelerate our ability to um, observe or phenotype um, uh, the infection process. And so uh, what we did was um, uh, firstly start with a system where we had this transparent growing medium, so at least we can see the thing, this is really important. Um, and then based on this transparent growing medium, we um, uh, used um, 3D printers and Raspberry Pi low-cost computers to build, um, you know, machines, although, you know, they're quite um, basic machines, but machines that will help us to um, image and to manipulate these Petri dishes such that we can do it on, on at scale, so tens of thousands a day. Uh, and then we couple this new hardware to new software. So um, trained an AI to recognize nematodes from the um, images that come out of the imaging machines um, such that we can then um, phenotype or observe this infection on tens of thousands of plants a day um, with relative ease. We had to do a lot of plants for this phenotyping experiment or we wanted the capability to be able to phenotype a lot of plants um, uh, in the lab um, for two main reasons. The first one is um, replication. So as is common in um, biological systems, there's variation. Um, and in order to account for the variation, um, you do a lot of biological replicates so that you can take the average of those, um, uh, those observations and, and that's more, you know, more likely representative of the, the, the true um, uh, phenotype. And then you can compare the means, compare the averages effectively between your conditions. Um, and that's true in biology in general, but it's very true in pathology and in plant parasitic nematode biology because the system is very variable. 
So there are lots of factors that contribute, and so we need lots of replicates to make sure we can um, account for some of this variation. So um, we will typically do 20 biological replicates per um, condition that we're testing in any given experiment. Uh, and so that's one reason. So anything we want to test, we multiply by 20. Um, and uh, then the other side of it is what do we want to test? And so we want to test, you know, um, panels of diversity of plants to see um, uh, whether they are susceptible to nematodes or whether they are resistant to nematodes to identify those genes that contribute to susceptibility or contribute to resistance. Uh, and these panels are large. So the panel that we recently screened was 550 um, different varieties of the plant. And so 550 times 20 replicates is 10,000. So um, the numbers get big very quickly. And so, you know, if you have to do anything 10,000 times, even if it's quick, it's a lot of work. Um, and so we really had to speed up our ability to do um, the phenotyping so that we could start to address these questions about the natural variation in nematode resistance and susceptibility in, in different populations. So I've always been interested in plants um, from when I was a child. So um, we had a greenhouse and I used to grow plants and I was always very, very interested in that. And so I wanted to do, um, uh, yeah, uh, uh, when I, I knew I was going to go to university and I wanted, wanted to study um, botany, basically, or, or, or plant sciences. Um, I came from a family of academics, and so this idea about being an academic wasn't alien, and so I was kind of, um, uh, you know, thinking about that um, pretty early on. And then when I got to university, I went to the University of Leeds, and I studied biology, um, because it, this aren't, there aren't enough um, plant sciences courses in, uh, available, um, and the closest thing I'd get was biology. So I chose a biology degree, and then I did as much plant stuff as I possibly could, and um, really enjoyed um, studying in university. And so, um, you know, I kind of just put that together and, and decided, okay, I'm going to go and do a PhD. And it was during my final year um, undergraduate project where you get to choose to do, a, you know, a reasonably extended um, uh, like stint of research in a lab in the university, um, where I first got exposed to actual research in the university, but also the field that I currently work in now. So my final year undergraduate project was on plant parasitic nematodes, and I still work on plant parasitic nematodes today. And I'm the kind of person who is um, interested in lots of things, and so I get the impression, to be honest, that whatever I had done my final year project in, I would probably just be working on that, because I find that the more I look into something, the more interesting it becomes, and so then it's this self-fulfilling. So I did my final year undergraduate project in, 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 plant, in plant pathology and plant parasitic nematodes. Thought, I'll do that for the PhD. So I applied for one PhD in that. I was very lucky to get it. Um, and this PhD was rather unusual in that it was a joint appointment between two institutes. So between the University of Leeds in Leeds and um, the James Hutton Institute in Dundee. And it was like a proper joint position. So I would spend nine months in Leeds and then nine months in Dundee and then alternate for the um, four years. So this is a lot of work um, and not very, uh, um, yeah, you can imagine how difficult that would be, right? Um, and so, um, but it was wonderful at the same time because it doubles the number of people you can talk to and it doubles the number of things you get exposed to and, and stuff like that, so it was super valuable. And um, I was working on, if, frankly, the same thing I'm doing right now, so what are the genes that are important in, in, the, in this interaction between plant parasitic nematodes and their host plants. And uh, yeah, basically thoroughly enjoyed it and thought I want to keep doing more of this. So um, after that, I applied to um, um, BBSRC, the National Funding for um, Biological Research in the UK, um, for a fellowship. And at the time, these were called um, Anniversary Future Leader Fellowships. And so it was a three-year position that um, uh, allowed you to basically pursue independent research, so typically carry on the kind of thing that you were you were doing. So I'm very fortunate to get that, and because it was a project I had written, I designed it the way that I wanted, not just for the science, but also for the um, kind of career development stuff. So I actually at the time decided I like the joint position, and so I'll do that again. So I then had another joint position by my own design this time, uh, but this time between the John Innes Center in Norwich and the University of Dundee, again in Dundee. And so I did the same thing, nine months, nine months um, for three years. And then coming towards the, coming towards the end of that fellowship, I decided um, uh, I want to keep going in this. And so I applied for another fellowship from PBSRC, this time the David Phillips Fellowship, so much larger and allows you to establish a group. Um, but at that point, I decided I had had enough of moving around and I wanted to kind of consolidate and, you know, this, um, you know, family, considerations and things like that. So um, uh, that one I decided to 
um, apply to um, and, and move it to Cambridge and then started the group there proper. Um, and then that was in 2018, so about four or five years ago. Uh, and the group's just been growing um, in Cambridge ever since. And most recently, we just moved to our brand new flag flagship building called the Crop Science Centre, which is this um, initiative between the University uh, of Cambridge and the um, uh, NIAB, the National Institute of Agricultural Botany. And the idea of the, um, the alliance is to accelerate the transition of fundamental plant sciences into application. So this is like, um, you know, vindicating the whole idea behind all the research I've been doing at the time, which is to try to understand enough about the problem in order to um, prevent the problem in, in agriculture. And so now we're really set up to try to push um, our fundamental science to impact. I think the best thing about my job is um, uh, the discovery aspect. So I'm most interested when we're finding something new um, and then once we have found it, it's almost less interesting to me and then I move on to the next finding something new. So it's definitely the process of the finding something new rather than what it is that I have found that I find most interesting.